Hey guys, so I'm on my way to inspect a bridge this morning over in Clayton, California. Do a routine inspection. And I saw this on the side of the road. Now, when I drove by it, I had to do a double take because that, that is a rail car bridge, you can tell. It's made out of a rail car, right? It's kind of a funky old rail car. So I thought I would just kind of go over it and share my thoughts on what I what what they were doing with this rail car here. I don't know what this property is here for, or it looks like it's owned by the government now, or the state, or I'm, I'm not sure who, but kind of an interesting, really odd looking rail car. So um, I already measured it from, from here to, to there. That, that's one rail car. It's nine foot, um, about nine foot, six inches wide, which is kind of odd for a car. Then uh, it has these two and a half foot pedestrian lanes overall. So overall from edge to edge, it's about 14 and a half feet. Okay, so uh, it's kind of weird. This car has this grating on one end and it has the entire top center sill totally exposed. That's, uh, that's kind of interesting. And then uh, this grating, this extension that they added on is very interesting as well. We'll go underneath and take a peek, but uh, obviously the um, these handrails are not compliant since there's nothing there. Right, there's uh, there's no infill. It's just uh, kind of weird. Just goes right through. You can see this right here. This is where the um, uh, right here is the the truck bolster. I'm sorry, the body bolster. So the center plate's gonna be right around here. Well, I'll I'll take a peek underneath here in a few minutes. But uh, look at this thing. The center sill is just completely exposed. It's like just two two I beams. I don't think I've uh, ever seen a car quite like this one before. And the, um, looks like maybe right here. It looks a little bit too small to be the center plate on this side. Let's measure it. This is, um, 20 inches there. That's, uh, I wouldn't imagine that's the center plate on the side. It might be. It's kind of, it's kind of weird. Okay, so you have these gaps here. It's, uh... Let me check to see if that is a center plate over on that side. See if I can gain access. Hmm. A little narrow. Well, we can. I think we can fit. Absolutely beautiful area over here. Look at that rail car. Okay, so that is. Look at that. It's only. Uh, so, so you can see that that is a center plate right there. That's really cool. Um, what does that say? Canadian rail car, huh? The abutments are very interesting. Well, the, the uh, bearing plate, the, this one, um, they have the, the, the steel plate here bearing directly on the concrete. That's something that we typically uh, do not recommend. But this one's been sitting here for a number of years, and that's... Uh, well, that's 16 inches. That's kind of an odd number. Usually you see anywhere from 10 to 12. 16 is kind of odd. And this is kind of odd. That this is That's the original rail car side sill. You can see it still has the graffiti on there. But it has a uh, quick dog leg there. See that how a dog leg's right there? That's, uh, that's kind of odd as well. Just a really odd rail car. I'm thinking this thing may have been some kind of narrow gauge rail car. So that makes it pretty old, but it's not riveted. It's not a riveted together rail car. Let me, let me measure the center plate here. 11 and a half inch center plate, which is, I guess, pretty normal. Oh, okay. So it, uh, Kind of flutters out a little bit over here. Okay. So that, uh, that rail car over here, it's probably, if I remove some of this here, 
probably welded. No, it's not. Huh. Look at that. It's not welded down. Is it, maybe it's welded here? No, I don't see any weld there either. It may just be sitting no. Oh, you know what? We have these. Looks like there's these uh, bolts here, so it may just be that. Uh, uh, this is welded to this, and then it's bolted together. I, I bet that's what they were doing. So there is a bolt there, it's bolted down. Of course, you don't see any uh, that net's not engaging fully. Oh, and there's the angle here. Okay, so see on this one they did they weld this angle to this plate, and then bolted the rail car to it. Looks like they used some all thread. Okay, and then they. Uh, they bolted the uh, the plate down to the concrete here, so they bolted it down here. There's another bolt there, probably the same on the other side. That's interesting. I've never seen a, a bearing assembly quite like that before. This is just uh, this is really cool. And even the way they did some of the stuff underneath, it's very interesting, particularly. The way they did these kickers, these extensions, right? So you have, this is the real, original rail car side sill. It's kind of interesting the way they put these arms out and then they brought this, uh, so there's a vertical here, there's a kicker, and then the kicker going right back over to the, to the center sill. That's, um, that's really cool. I've never seen anybody do it like that. And this car has been here for a long time. Now, um, from an inspection standpoint, um, you can see that this cross member here, let me get my flashlight out, see if I can shed some light. All right, so that that cross member there, you can see it looks really good. It's in really good shape. It's straight all the way across. Well, actually, you know what? Look at right there, see that? It, it's damaged there. So that that's a problem there. And if you look at that cross member over, the, cross member over there, it looks like there's something going on over here. It's damaged. The next one's damaged as well. So this car does have some damage. It, it, it should have been repaired before they, they installed it. So it's kind of interesting. that they, they did some interesting engineering work as far as these kickers in, in this angle and even how they did the abutments. But then they don't spend the time to, uh, to fix that stuff up. So it's just really interesting. Let's walk over here and see what this side looks like. Uh, it's kind of odd, like that part there, you know, I mean, that part there, that, that, that's just something they just should have cut off. It's just an extra part of the rail car. I'm not sure why they left it there. Those cross numbers look really good on this side. Um, I see a little bit of damage on that one. But it, it is relatively deep, looks like a standard depth rail car. It should be about... Uh, here should be about 14 inches. Let's see what this one measures. Measures, so it's a little bit shallower than normal, 13, 12 and a half, they're almost well, 12 and three quarters. So that's uh, a little odd. You can see there's, there's some damage. Those, those should have been repaired. I don't think they've, I guess it is possible that those have been damaged while the bridge has been in service, but I, I, I kind of doubt it. I think that was done before. So this, uh, oh, it's getting kind of dark in here, guys. I, sorry about the video. Wow, well, look at that. Look at that weld on this. That's really interesting. That, look how high that weld is. That is just pretty interesting. Um, there's a little, see a little hole there, there's a little torch cut or something on that, that, that should have been fixed as well. Oh, look at this. Okay, so let's see if we can tell what year this, actually this car's not too terribly old. This is called the consolidated box on the rail car. Uh, so you can see back in 
January of 1987, something was done to the brakes. Uh, so I can't really tell what kind of brakes this thing had, but but in 1987, something was done to the brakes. So this car isn't too terribly old. So this, this uh, imagine if it was in service in 87, maybe within three to 10 years, so that'll put it back to 97. There's, there's no way this thing can be done. So maybe this car was installed in late 80s or early 90s. Okay, whoa, slippery, muddy. Okay, so pretty interesting rail car. Um, I guess I'm mostly impressed with all these kickers. Now you see, not all, like that one doesn't have a kicker, but that one does. So it looks like every other one has a kicker. Going back uh, to the center sill. The way they um, welded this, I don't know why they welded it to the face of that C channel. It would, it would have been way better welding it to the back side over here instead of the front side. The front side, now you're, all you're able to do is weld over there and weld the back side. That, that's not a lot of weld. I would have rather liked to see it over here and then weld along the full length all the way up. That would have been a little bit better connection. And uh, I'm disappointed that they just left this stuff on. It, it just makes it look kind of junky. It wouldn't have taken much longer uh, to clean it up like that. You can see another piece of steel over there. Hmm. Pretty interesting. Uh, another interesting thing is uh, there's this thing hanging down right here and this bar. I, I don't know what that was used for. I don't think it was a part of the rail car. I'm not sure why that's on there. Maybe they used that to install the bridge somehow. Kind of peculiar. Another thing I'm looking at are those abutments over there. This is kind of interesting. So you can see on that abutment there's a crack, a horizontal crack going all the way up and over. Okay. Um, so something's going on with that with those with that abutment for it to crack like that. Uh, it's not horrible, but uh, that's something that the owner should be monitoring and seeing is it moving. So uh, what we would do is is measure it now. You know, we would put some indicators along it and 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 measure the, the, the gap and then come back in a year from now and, and check to see if it's moving. And then that way we can project what's it doing, what's it gonna do in the next you know, five, 10, 20 years. This abutment actually looks really good on this side. There's no cracks, there's uh, no, no settlement. Looks like there's, um, this is kind of a, a little bit of a concern. This looks like a, it's a stem wall abutment, so it's gonna have a stem wall and a flat plate, okay. Um, which is a fantastic abutment, unless right over here, this is probably the, the end or the bottom of the abutment. So uh, just a horizontal piece like this with a, with a vertical stem wall. So I bet if I dig underneath here, let's, uh, let's get our hands a little bit dirty. Well, nothing could be uh, as deep as a, maybe even two feet or a foot, so. Um, let's dig a little bit. Well, that's pretty good. So one thing that, that, that they should be concerned about, well, that you're, if you're the owner of this, or if you have a bridge like this, is, um, looks like the waterway here gets very high. And you can tell that by all the, all the crud that's accumulated on the bottom here. It looks like this waterway gets pretty high and, um, and it's, it's depositing all that junk inside the bridge. So, what my concern would be is, is this being undercut? So that, that's the bottom of the foundation. So if this starts eroding, uh, there's gonna be a cavity underneath this abutment. And then as that once that cavity starts eroding, it's gonna go really fast. Right now, it's, it's, it's really good condition. Well, not really good. I'd say it's, it's marginally okay condition. It's not, it's not going anywhere. But if it's not maintained, it's going to get bad really fast. So what they should be doing is taking some of these rocks uh, and, and just protecting that better. We don't want to see any of that concrete over here. All we want to see a stem wall like that bridge over uh, that abutment over there. Uh, we'll take a look at it. That one is, is well protected. Okay, so 
This one, what what uh, client should be concerned about is protecting this abutment with some with some riprap, some gravel, with with more dirt, anything to keep water from uh, from coming and, and taking all the soils out, pull um, pulling that, making a big giant cavity, and then that ab that abutment's going to topple over. Okay, um, and uh, do have a kind of a cool video that talks about abutment toes. Now that that is the abutment toe right over here. This entire edge is that that's abutment toe that, that they should be concerned about. There are a few other designs of abutments that have um, a longer vertical stem underneath the, that footer, but I doubt it's going to be like that on this bridge. It's really a pretty moss rock. Look at that. It's gorgeous out here. All right. Take a look at the other abutment. Isn't that pretty? Okay, so on this abutment, you can actually see the abutment kind of bowed out here in the middle that's uh that's pretty interesting the way it's it's bowed out here so i would uh you know so something is pushing this out obviously so i would look back over here uh, on this roadway and be concerned about why is water setting here and and creating such a big uh, surcharge behind that abutment <coughs> the abutment here is once that's the that could be concrete there, uh, but it looks like it's pretty well protected. <coughs> it's a steel plate on concrete, they didn't even bother to trim it when it was too long. <coughs> you can see here. Let's move three quarters of an inch. So come back in a year, we should measure that again, see what it is, and see if that abutment's moving or not. And then uh, we can project how long this bridge is going to stay before it has to be replaced. Maybe it's not moving, maybe it is moving. That, uh, that's some damage right there, too. Extra parts that they left over from the bridge right over here. It's kind of goofy looking. Don't know why they left it there. But, um, all right, that's all guys.